reporting. Let's discuss further with Paul Rosenzweig, who served as the Deputy Assistant Secretary for Policy in the Homeland Security Department. He is now a senior fellow at the R Street Institute, a think tank, and also here is CNN senior White House correspondent Pamela Brown. Uh, Paul, there, there's now much more uh, testimony linking Mick Mulvaney to pushing a quid pro quo with Ukraine. What do you make of that? Well, I think that that makes it clear that to the extent there was a, an attempt to solicit uh, information that was beneficial to President Trump, that solicitation goes all the way to the White House. There had been some suggestion in the last few days that perhaps uh, Ambassador Sondland was acting on his own or uh, that Rudy Giuliani was acting on his own without any, uh, without any impetus from the president. But now that it's become clearer that the chief of staff was acting in his official capacity as the manager of this effort to secure Ukrainian assistance for the president's uh, campaign, re-election campaign, it's becoming much clearer that uh, all of this activity goes all the way back at least as high as the chief of staff. And then it becomes pretty incredible to think that it doesn't involve uh, the man behind all three of these other fellows, the president of the United States. Pamela Mulvaney was supposed to testify today mm -hmm. behind closed doors, but he didn't. What happened? And is there no. any chance he may talk during the public hearings that start next week? That is unlikely as of now, Anna. Uh, what we're told is that last night, House investigators issued a subpoena for him to, to compel him to testify. And then, according to uh, the Democrats, a minute before his deposition was supposed to start this morning, uh, they were informed that the White House asserted absolute immunity to prevent him from complying with that subpoena. Now, as we know, some of this, um, Charles Kupperman, an NSC official, he's got a court case ongoing over a similar issue with the subpoena for him to testify and the White House assertion of absolute immunity, but it's unlikely that that's going to be settled in the courts by the time the Democrats want to wrap this up, which is, uh, according to our latest reporting, just before Christmas. There is an ongoing court case involving Don McGahn. That could have an impact here, but in that case, the judge would have to say that the White House doesn't have any standing um, on absolute immunity. So at this point, it appears unlikely that he's going to be testifying, Anna, but a as was pointed out, he is a critical figure in all of this, and he he could be the direct link uh, to the president in all of this. Paul, how can Mick Mulvaney just straight up ignore a subpoena? Well, it's an unfortunate circumstance that Congress's powers to enforce its own subpoena authority have atrophied over the last 40 or 50 years, frankly. Uh, and so this is the president, in effect, asserting an absolute immunity from scrutiny that is very reminiscent of why we had a revolution to get away from from kings who who asserted a kingly prerogative it's it's absolutely wrong uh, of the president to do so but there's very limited way of compelling people uh, to abide by the subpoena authority especially when uh, the house democratic caucus cannot enlist the Senate Republicans in enforcing congressional prerogatives through other mechanisms like budgets or appointment authority there's also, I guess, the obvious question, why not let your people testify if you're in the White House if there's nothing to hide? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, that, uh, the, the, answer, the question sort of answers itself, doesn't it? Um, there, there are sometimes valid reasons for asserting a, 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 an executive privilege to keep advice to a president confidential. But uh, as we learned in the Clinton investigation and in the Nixon investigation, that confidentiality requirement uh, evaporates when what's under investigation is, is quite literally criminal or impeachable conduct. Uh, Pamela, one person who did testify was Gordon Sondland. His name comes mm -hmm. up a lot in all of the testimony we've seen so far. He had to go revise his testimony that he earlier gave to Congress. What's the president saying about Sondland now? You know, he is changing his tune on a not surprisingly from what he has said before when he viewed Sondland's testimony more favorable to him. And then after the revision where Sondland told House investigators that he actually suddenly recalled pulling aside a Ukrainian official in September and saying, if you want the, the, the aid, the, the military aid, then you're going to have to announce these investigations publicly. So today the president was asked about this as he was leaving the White House and he clearly tried to distance himself from Gordon Sondland, his EU Ambassador. Here's what he had to say. But let me just tell you, I, I hardly know the gentleman, but this is the man who said there was no quid pro quo, and he still says that. 
So this is a similar tactic we've seen from the president in the past when suddenly if someone says something that's unfavorable to him, um, he tries to distance himself. But what's interesting to note here, Anna, is that previously when the testimony from Sondland was more favorable, the no quid pro quo, the president praised Sondland, saying that he was, you know, a great American. So clearly changing his tune here. And in this testimony coming out today from Fiona Hill and Alex Vindman, uh, under oath this testimony that they gave, they made clear that the, the, the the understanding was the president put Sondland in charge of Ukraine policy, and now you have the president saying he hardly knew the gentleman. All right, Pam Brown and Paul Rosenzweig, great to have both of you here to yep. help us through all this. Thank you. Much more on our breaking news, including new excerpts regarding the president and Rudy Giuliani. Plus, Justin, Joe Biden now reacting to the possibility that Michael Bloomberg may soon join the 2020 race. Here, Biden today.